What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. Um, it's funny, we just finished a few days ago doing a new show. Now we're back at it again because it has been nothing but rapid fire news articles coming out and stuff that's been happening that's just, just it's just people making moves. That's it. It has begun. Um... So welcome back again to the Nerd Gen Report, where we bring you not only re- news, we bring you reviews and clues to what's going on in the superhero genre. We got a lot to talk about today, Brian. Um, I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me is Mr. Brian Schultz, as always. Um, before we get into it, please hit that like and subscribe button and notification bell and share with your friends. It really does help support the channel. Brian, what's going on, man? We live in a different world than we lived <laughs> like three days ago. And I, I'm, that is not an exaggeration. Yeah. That is not an exaggeration. We have some really cool individual property news, but industry news, the industry is being reshaped. And it's something we talked about. I think yeah. we had an episode called Streaming Wars a couple of months ago. And and this is something we discussed. I think it's just happening faster maybe than um, everyone would have anticipated. But, I mean, it is, it is game on. It is oh, industry. yeah. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. People are making moves because they see what Disney has done. They see what Netflix in, has done, and they were the only game in town at, at one point. And Amazon paying out all sorts of type of money to get stuff done, and it's just like it's game on now, right? What's uh, weird, like it's almost like we're headed back to the 1960s and 70s where you had four channels on your TV. The only difference now is you're going to have like four conglomerates controlling a streaming channel, a cable channel, and and theatrical releases. But it's kind of the same idea. We're coming, we're coming full circle, just in yeah. the new media. Yeah. Our first topic of discussion is Mr. David Sasloff. Yeah, that's a name we're going to have to get really familiar with, I think. <laughs> um, he, he is going to be the one ruling over this... Uh, Discovery and Warner Media uh, merger that just taken place because AT and T finally said that's it. We don't want to deal with this anymore. We were not, we were not, uh, how would I say, suitable owners of this property. So they have decided to do this merger with Discovery and and have someone take over it. How much was this deal for? One hundred and four billion. Yeah, I mean, we'll leave out the entire discussion of AT&T's ill-fated and short-lived uh, foray <laughs> into this. But, yeah. uh, you know, suffice to say, this is a company that in six months has gone from being an owner of uh, everything we know to be Warner Media and Warner Brothers and DirecTV to being completely out of sort of the, the, the cable business, the streaming business. They're going back to their roots as sort of a, a cellular provider. You know, so that's a whole other discussion. But we have a new entity, and that's the key. The new entity is the one that David Zasloff will be running, and that will combine all of the assets of Warner Media and Discovery. So Warner Brothers, HBO, HBO Max, HGTV, Discovery Plus, CNN, TNT, TBS, TLC. There are a wow. lot of assets under this roof, people, and that's something to really pay attention to this is not just two brands it is seven eight there's a lot of channels and a lot of options for uh content here for this so they become a major player they move themselves they don't have the subscriber base online that disney or netflix do or amazon does but there's that potential they they can put themselves into that tier as a competitive force and zaslav the, the number that jumped out on the first call 20 billion of expected spending in the first year on content. Netflix, for reference, 17 billion. Wow. You're out spending Netflix on content. You're, you mean to be around to play. He threw out a lot of names that are going to fall under this new deal. Do, is there a possible rebrand in the future? 
That's a good question. I mean, I think a lot of these assets have a following in their current form. Like I couldn't see HGTV being renamed, you know, TNT, TBS. I mean, there are networks that are known, CNN for news. I mean, I, could you see it just called something? I, I don't know. I think, I think this is going to be, this might be a really bad analogy, but it, I think it's almost more akin to like gas stations where it's like you pull up to a gas station and it looks like it's a brand, but it's really one parent that owns yeah, like yeah. five or six brands of gas. Like I, I almost think they'll try to keep these individual labels, but you will see some cross pollination for sure. There's already been some memes and some jokes, but like, you know, you'll have the people already joking about like, could you have like a, uh, a renovate property brothers redoing like Wayne Manor or something like that. But like, but, but that idea, look, it won't be like that, but, but yeah. you will have a little bit of that idea. And I think it's interesting because like you look at TNT and TBS, I mean, they're always showing Marvel movies these days. Like that's probably going to stop, right? At yeah. some point they're going to be showing DC movies, if anything. And, and, and uh, Marvel movies will retreat to kind of wherever it, Disney or Hulu are going to be. So I think you'll see some of that reorganization over time. And I think like right now, even on the streaming side, like you can't get Harry Potter movies on HBO max. Those are being sold out and, mm -hmm. and licensed to Netflix or Amazon. Those will eventually come back. Like stuff like that will get consolidated and put to where it's like, everything is, um, you know, under the roof where it was created, but um, like I said, for now, it's just this entity is interesting because they have movie, cable, and streaming, and they don't have to really build a new brand. There yeah. are brands that people know, so they can kind of deal these out into different spots. I'm interested to see how they do that. Some would say that the reorganization that took place at Disney was spelled the beginning of the end uh, for the type of quality that we've gotten with the content over at Disney. Do you and we already have spoken about it and we agree that this is too early to tell and what's working, they're not going to really mess with that sort of chemistry that's already in place. But with this one, do you see the opposite effect or the opposite of what people are, 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 have been saying with, with Disney and their reorganization with this reorganization being a shining light uh, for the DC property? Well, too soon to tell, but I think there's a couple of points I'm not seeing highlighted enough that I think are worth getting into. So number one is this deal is not going to close until sometime in 2022. So legally, we can talk about David Zasloff all we want. He is not at the controls today and he will not be until this deal closes. He can't. Yeah. So when you see the news of what of Jason Kalar exiting as the head of Warner Media, it that could be immediate. Mm -hmm. So that means there won't be leadership potentially for a year in between, or an interim head, or somebody who knows they probably ain't gonna have a job in about yeah, a year. Yeah, yeah. So that's an interesting setup because we got so many things that are in process and being greenlit. I don't anticipate any change to something like, you know, Flashpoint is already filming. Suicide Squad, Peacemaker, things that were already being made are going to get made. Like think about when Disney and Fox, you know, came together. They didn't stop Dark Phoenix. I should have stopped Dark Phoenix. <laughs> they didn't. <laughs> they, they finished all those, you know, and th yeah. that's just the cost of doing business. Um, so I think it'll be the same thing here. But what I think is... TBD is I don't see any way you don't get a complete refresh and reboot of the DC universe again. And the reason I say that is because David Zasloff has been around the industry forever. He's an ex NBC universal executive. You know, there's plenty of features on him. Google one, you'll find it. Tough dude, classic media mogul personality. You know what those guys don't like? Mm -hmm working with people that they don't know who are already in their seat. You know what they do like? Putting their own people in those seats. Got it. So to me, if Kalar is already gone, which he is, sounds like he is, and Sarnoff, and Walter Hamada, done. Wow. No chance. Wow. No chance. They can politic all they want, but this guy is not coming in to make nice with them. 
They're not his people. There's yeah. also, it's funny, he's actually supposedly friends with Toby Emmerich, but there's already a report Toby Emmerich's leaving too. Wow. So you're going to have full reset of the leadership of the Warner theatrical arm and DC films, in my opinion. Nothing confirmed, but that, I just don't see how it ends yeah. any other way. I mean, everything's going to, everything beyond what's already been greenlit and being mm -hmm. made, write it in pencil because it can go <laughs> away and be redone. Hey, it makes sense, man. Especially with all these new changes, these guys are going to sit down and see what's what they have, what's going to happen. And they're going to look at performance and, and you know, they, they're going to look at all the things that have gone wrong and they're going to start from scratch. And I'll tell you, man, I'm excited about the DC aspect if they touch that. And I, I think they will because it's like this, man. You've seen what Warner has done. They've had their hits and misses. And I would assume that these guys want to do well. And they're going to not necessarily... Yeah, they'll copy <laughs> what Marvel has done and try to replicate that success. Why wouldn't they want to do that? And now is the perfect opportunity for it. They, they, there is no other uh, time to do this until obviously that takes place. Then we'll probably uh, get some news as to the new stuff or the new things that they're going to be doing. I think you also have to look at the, the balance of power within this new entity shifts a little bit away from DC. And what I mean by that is, so DC Comics, I'm not educated enough to speak on. I know they were struggling financially. Mm -hmm. But the simple reality is, you know, something like an HDTV the, and TLC, the reality shows, they're such a powerful asset, sort of a very, you know, relatively cheap, make a lot of money. When you add that into the combined entity, it takes pressure off of other things. It's like, well, I don't need DC to be everything because I've got other things that I can spend money on. So that's good and bad, right? Yeah. The, the good of it is you can take a little more time to get things right, yeah. right? You don't have to look at it as, hey, we need cash. So you know what? If we've got a crappy Justice League movie, get that out the door. Let's get a couple hundred million. We need that. You, yeah, yeah. you don't have as much pressure on that. Now, the flip side of that is everyone's competing for resources. And David Zaslav is an unscripted TV guy by trade. So mm -hmm. you could say, like, does he pull money away from, you know, superhero and comic book fair to say, you know what, the stuff that reliably makes money is Chip and Joanna Gaines. Like, I don't need <laughs> the green light. Zatanna because I'm going to just green light the next HGTV series. That's what makes sure. So that could happen. Mm -hmm. But I think at the very least, to your point, you're going to get a, a patient and full rethink of everything that's in the deck. And that's what I mean by pencil versus pen. So we'll talk about things like Snyderverse and JJ Abrams and all this sort of stuff, but everything is going to be reevaluated and it's going to be looked at with a different set of lens with yeah. a different pocketbook and maybe looked at, at, at as having a different home like make no mistake before you only had one cable channel it was hbo yeah that's a, that, that has that has an identity certain kind of programming so now you kind of have like all these different you know you could make a comic book series that is meant for TBS. That's a very different type of show than what's meant for streaming on HBO Max. So there's there's more of a sandbox there to play in. So don't underestimate what they can do with that. Yeah. I would say this, that he, David comes from this place of, you know, reality TV and stuff, unscripted stuff. This poses, I believe, and he's been successful. And this poses, I believe, a new challenge for him to make what has not been successful in the DC universe and make it into a success the way Marvel has done it. Marvel has made crazy money. Why would you leave that on the table if you have the possibility of making that something that people are ranting and raving over? You know what I'm saying? So it presents an opportunity for him to prove himself 
and 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 do something outside of what he's used to doing and i think that is a possibility as well so i'm gonna make a prediction here okay i predict the new head of dc films will be somebody from the parliament wow you think they're gonna poach somebody from it makes too much sense because you have a guy who is not his background is not in comics and superheroes but he's not a dummy he knows the amount of money that's in that space that's what i'm saying a smart executive is going to be hands-on but he's going to say i'm not going to be i'm not going to rule with an iron fist on things i don't know what i'm going to do is i'm going to hand out a massive paycheck to lure somebody from the competition and look in the comic books themselves how many times did like a, you know the Jack Kirby, Stan Lee, the writers go back and forth? They all did yeah. in the history of Mar- of Marvel and DC. They always yeah. have. This is no different to me. So you, That's you true. have an, you're not going to get Kevin Feige, okay? He's not moving, right? So you get maybe it's Nate Moore. You go after somebody two, three, four on the list, and you say yeah. this is your big shot. Yeah. You're never going to get Kevin's seat because he's he's never going to die. Kevin's immortal. <laughs> so. This is your chance yeah. to make your mark and run your own thing and compete. And that is, why, why wouldn't you do that? So my prediction yeah, is yeah. you will see somebody from Disney, Marvel, and Parliament running DC films or whatever they, re, they may remake the departments. Whatever they make the DC department, somebody from there will be running that in 2022. Wow. A lot to unpack. A lot to speculate on. Hopefully, DC is in good hands. And I believe, and we believe, that they're going to make a change. And hey, for those people who wanted the Snyderverse, Brian, I don't know if that ever takes place now. Because it didn't work before. And the numbers show that. They're not going to look backwards. They're looking forwards. Tell me. Yeah, I, I've seen a lot of stories out there saying that this is positive for restoring the Snyderverse. I disagree. I think it's the opposite. The reason why I think that is clean slate. I think that's the, the priority is you, you, don't want, you don't want baggage. You don't want controversy. You want clean slate. And it's not to say that there isn't validity to things that were in the Snyderverse or the castings and things like that. But I just think, again, if you're coming in fresh, yeah. the easier choice is to simply kind of say like, all right, I'm going to disassociate myself from all of that, the good and the bad, and just get fresh eyes, fresh vision, fresh take. And so as a result, I actually think it's, and, and, you know, quite honestly, like I said, Zack Snyder's been singing Netflix's praises. He seems like he's in a better place, headed for, headed for some good things. Um, Army of the Dead, really getting good reviews. Seems like a lot of buzz there. Um, and I think, like I said, you know, we're talking about being a year away from Zaslav being in the seat. I just, I don't see it. I think the more interesting question is these holdover actors and actresses who the old WB leadership wanted to keep doing business with, the Ezra Miller, Jason Momoa, Gal Gadot, how much longer are they going to go with those people? Um, Even if they are popular, like, will there be some rethink and refresh there? I think that's a more interesting debate. But no, Snyderverse, I actually think it's actually even less likely that it that it comes to fruition now given that there's going to be a fully new take i think on the universe coming yeah i think the more debatable one is be curious as to your thoughts do you think jj abram's gonna stick around and last long and in, in seemingly his new god and see he's the new snyder the new godfather of the dc universe what do you think about his position in all this um i think he's gonna do what he has been assigned to do in the short term and see how things play out I guess in the first 6 to 12 months of the new uh, man in charge and see how that plays out 
Uh, yeah, that's how I see that going. What do you think happened to the Superman project? Because that one is not far enough along to where I could safely guarantee that it would get made. Hey, if there are enough people out there and if they ask the question, do we do this? Do we go ahead and move forward with this? And the, I don't know if there were people in the room that were too afraid to speak up about it. Now there may be new people talking about it and not the old people talking about it. So it's possible that they may shut it down because it's not a good idea, man. It's not a good idea. It's not. It's just not a good idea. Because you I can't think, go. I think that's an interesting. That's going to be one of the most interesting ones. Because, like I said, I think something that you know, if they were, if they had a cast and a director locked and loaded, and they were set to be filming this summer, I would say, yeah, it's going to get made. No, that's yeah. fine. But like, you haven't even seen a script. You haven't seen a screenplay. Like, I don't know if they're going to. I don't know if they're going to make it. And I and like, I, I just want now. I understand like that could be a big early decision. Yeah. In the sense that if they pull the plug on it, there will probably be some backlash that way too. Of like, hey, why you know, you know, person of color in the Superman role, new management comes in, the first thing they do is kill that. Like, you know, that's a that's a little bit of a, a of a hand grenade. But if 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 people start complaining about oh they're not doing the black Superman, all right, guys, we're doing icon. Right? You throw you give them something that makes more sense, yo, because uh, this black Superman thing doesn't, uh, unless you're doing Calvin Ellis and 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 and, and Val Zah, right? Unless you're doing those characters. I'll give you an easier get out of jail. Why don't you just fast track Green Lantern, Jon Stewart? You could, and I wouldn't, and I don't think there would be a problem with that. I'd love to see Icon though. I love I'm with, to see I'm, I'm with you. There's ways. I just think that one, that one file away, folks, because I think for the new management, that will be a very interesting, interesting conversation. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it will. Next up, um, in another big, uh, and this is something, Brian, that we talked about before, and you said this could possibly be the next step in these big guys wanting to consume other studios because they need content. Mm -hmm. And so now Amazon yep. made a $9 billion offer to MGM. So they're getting bond, they're getting all this content. The streaming wars has really started right now because everybody's making moves. What are your thoughts when you heard that? Oh, completely unsurprised. I mean, we, we, I think this, if you're sitting at home, just ask yourself and look at your monthly spending on what, what services you're buying and just ask yourself deep down, are you really excited about paying a subscription fee? Like, where are you okay with that? I think most people would say Netflix, I'm cool. 15 bucks a month, 14 bucks a month. I know what I'm getting. It's a lot wider range, all sort of stuff. Things like MGM, like things that are more specialized. How do you really feel about writing a separate check for that? And you can yeah. usually answer your own question. If, if you're sort of unsure, that's probably a seller. That's probably somebody who's going to be acquired because they yeah. don't have enough to offer you as a customer to stand alone. And so we talk about MGM, James Bond, incredibly valuable franchise. Rocky slash Creed, incredibly valuable franchise. Clubber Lang, that's Clubber two. Lang show. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but that, so that's two pieces of valuable IP. But is that enough to really sustain an entire studio or sustain a streaming service? Probably not. There's not enough of a universe that you can build off that. So... Amazon buys it, throws their resources behind it, and rebrands it under their umbrella. Done. Easy, yeah, right? Easy. easy. Yeah. Everyone wins, right? A distribution for Rocky and Bond goes on. Money backs those movies for another 10, 20 years. MGM has a home. Like, it, it makes too much sense. In fact, I'll just say it right now. Like, just watch for headlines, rumors, reports that Comcast and Viacom start talking. Because then that would be CBS and Paramount with NBC Universal and Peacock. I mean, yeah. 
whack, right? Like, you just look at the board and say, like, I'm going to put Star Trek with Fast and the Furious. I'm going to put, you know, that's all you're doing. At, I mean, it. at the end of the, that's it. Every time I see a commercial uh, that says Paramount Plus, I'm like, really, guys? Really? Exactly. <laughs> I don't want to see your. I don't want to see none of your stuff separately from what I'm already paying. I'm paying Disney Plus, Netflix, Hulu, all this stuff. I, I don't want to see what's what you got going on over there and Amazon. But if at the end of the day you're only writing four subscription checks, and that content on Paramount Plus is part of one of that, you're probably more likely to watch some of it. Yeah, yeah. So, hey. Again, streaming wars ha- is just in the beginning because massive amounts of money, ridiculous amounts of money are being thrown all over the place from making content to acquiring other studios for content. Uh, it's getting crazy out there. Let's see where this goes. I, 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 hey, I'm excited for the new stuff that they may come up with um and let's see what they create because this is you know this is listen we've said it in the past before this is the best time for content right now and it just doesn't see any um slow down for for the amounts of content that we're going to be getting in the next few years yeah and the thing to watch for too is the studios one by one get picked off or combined um we're starting to see it with regard to the talent so we talked about the Ryan Johnson Netflix deal. We've been talking about what, where's, what's Zack Snyder going to do? Chris Nolan's a free agent. I will say that's the one piece of the WB Discovery merger. I'm fascinated to see if they now yeah. can retain him. Yeah. All, if they, and I guarantee if they're like, hey, if that means we got to fire everyone you don't like, we'll do that. <laughs> but because we're going to do that anyway. Yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah. You know, so, but, so what you're going to see also is, is if you're not buying a studio, you're buying an individual. So I think you're going to see more of these like, hey, we're handing out $500 million to get <laughs> 10 years worth of whoever. Yeah, you know, yeah. Making wow. stuff for us. Yeah. Wow. Oh, man. Let us know in the comment section below what you think about this Amazon MGM. Uh, 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 what's it called? A, uh, well, a, it's, a, it's a rumored acquisition. They it's a rumored started, acquisition. Yeah, okay, not, it's a rumor. Yeah. But it's going to happen. Is gonna happen, right? Next up, Aquaman two. Aquaman 2's Jason Momoa just co-wrote the first draft of Aquaman. If Jason Momoa said, "I want to direct this joint," they're gonna probably tell him, "Okay." <laughs> Are they gonna say no to the guy? This guy made in, brought in a billion dollars, man, on his first joint. He hasn't done anything of great after that, but he brought in a billion dollars. They're not gonna say no to this guy. I can't wait to see this movie now. <laughs> so what's your thoughts on this? Yeah, look, I mean, the we, so in that article, he he also said that they were going to be shooting sooner than I thought. He said he was leaving in a couple months to go start the shoot. Yeah, in July, uh, I believe. Which kind of means that first draft had to have been submitted a while back because they, I would think they would have a shooting script or a screenplay by now that's probably changed a fair amount of things from whatever it was he submitted. If I recall... I feel like he talked about him wanting to use the like the Aquaman platform as some way to promote a very environmentally conscious story of a second one. I think he has some sort of sponsorship deal with some sort of water production company mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. focused on clean production. Yeah, I, I don't know the details, but I feel like that's something I've heard him say. So I'm imagining that's probably in in the first draft, and I think we're it more interested work. in we're more interested in kind of you know where's black manta and all that stuff but that 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 you know my sense is he he may get a writing credit on this if that's true mm-hmm. but whatever we see on the screen will probably have been modified and edited a oh yeah amount from whatever it was that he did submit so we, we, his arm is definitely gonna get chopped off they have to add that if this <laughs> is if this is the last go for him for aquaman they gotta do that they gotta do that let us know in the comment section below uh, about J- 
Jason Momoa's writing skills, writing the first draft for Aquaman 2, what do you think we're going to get? And it sounds pretty much accurate what you're describing of what this possibly may be uh, the theme of the movie. And it could work. It could work. Uh, Next up, when this was announced, I said, I can't wait. And there's a lot of things I can't wait for. I can't wait for the Eternals to come out. I can't wait for saying chi I can't wait for the Batman. And this one is up there for me personally with the Batman. So J.J. Abrams and uh, Matt Reeves, I think are also working with Bruce Tim on this, right? Bruce Tim. Okay, he's... On a new which, Batman. Which, by the way, Bruce Tim better not be shipped out as part of this merger. They better oh, hell keep making no. him more involved hell no. in hell the creative. No. Yeah. Hell yeah. no. They keeping that dude. They keeping that dude. Don't be surprised if under certain conditions, because you never know, man. You're in a world where you're good at what you do, but you don't really want to dive in into another role to deal with certain people. Right? No matter how much you... you if you're a modest guy, you don't care about too much about the money, you're getting paid well, and you just love doing what you're doing, great. But now if you're put it, being put in a position where you really have control and nobody's really gonna mess with your creative uh, process, then that's a little bit of an incentive to take on a big, a huge role in, in being one of the guys that are, are creating the content for DC and their universe. Batman, the Cape Crusader. And then we got this, uh, I think I'll put it up on uh, on, the, on, the, on the show, that uh, poster. Yep. Hey, this is one of the projects that I don't care that it is in its own universe, man. I don't care. Cause the Batman is just so, he, the way Batman, the animated series, and they captured his psyche, his fighting prowess, they covered everything about Batman. That, that was a bat, that's why the Batman was so amazing to watch. And so now we got two other individuals who are our storytellers, and they're putting their brains together to put something like this together. And man, I cannot wait. Brian, what did you think about, uh, what, how did you first react when you saw this announcement? Oh, I thought it was so cool because the poster echo, it's its different, but it echoes the look and feel of the animated series. Even though they yes. changed the cowl and the, and, yes. and, and the ears, it, it's drawn in a way that reminds you immediately of, of that. And when I saw that Bruce Tim was involved alongside, I'm like, so you have two filmmakers who, who grew up on the animated series, right? This is, we're talking almost 30 years ago when, when Abrams and Reeves would have been younger guys and probably watching yeah. this for the first time. And you've got Bruce Tim, who's kind of been the godfather all the way through. Like, amazing. Can't wait. And, and you're on HBO Max. So you're completely unfettered in terms of how, you know, if you want to make this as brutal as Invincible, you can do it. If you want to make this, right? You kind of, you don't have the constraints that they had when they were putting it in daytime kids television, you know, in, in, in the early 1990s. This is something to really, really look forward to and how these stories are told, how deep they get into the world of Batman himself and how deep they get into his uh, brain pretty much and understand who this character is and how far they can go with this character, man. Hey, I can't wait. And I also especially can't wait for how we get possibly a bit of a twist or reinterpretation of some of his role galleries. You know, as you know, Joker was the mainstay and Mark Hamill did an amazing job as the Joker. We're gonna keep Bane. We're gonna see, we're gonna see all these different characters. How different will they be? Will they be similar, the same? I I can't wait for this. I cannot wait for this. Uh, so let us know in the comments section below what you think about uh, this announcement of the Batman, the Cape Crusader animated series coming to HBO Max Cartoon Network. Right? This is gonna be. I, it's not. I've been thinking about this all day. Um. 
in another piece of news, <clears throat> a photo of the Riddler leaked uh, of what he, well, we already sort of saw what he is going to look like, but we got a different sort of uh, perspective of how he looks. And it makes sense. It, 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 it truly deviates from what we're used to seeing. You know, the, the, the question, question mark, mark costume. costume, the hat, all that stuff. And the, you know, Edward Nigma, Enigma. And how you see him in this photo leak makes sense. Brian, what do you think? Yeah, no, I think people have drawn attention to the fact that you know, he's wearing almost like a hazmat suit that's kind of makeshift. And so people like he really looks like the Zodiac killer, the way yeah. that he was pictured. And so and I think that fits perfectly. I mean, this this motif they've been going for is the serial killer seven style approach. And yeah. so you're trying to put that realism into it and a character who can look very campy if you're not careful. And so, yeah, I, I saw this. I was like, I, this totally makes sense to me. I totally get why you would go this route. And, and, you know, I think everything we've seen about this movie kind of makes us more and more excited. So, yeah, yeah I mean, I think it, it very much is in keeping with the tone they're, they're going for. And by the way, I, I did want to just, because we're talking about this, this Batman animated series and the Batman. Mm -hmm. My it combines the two things I would most recommend for when they do, if they're going to do the full refresh of DC and want to do something fun and different. The two very simple things that I would advise that are embodied here are one, embrace the classic stories. Don't get too fancy. They're all there in front of you. So like Batman Cape Crusader, it will be an update, but I'm sure it will echo, you know, mm -hmm. in the spirit of something classic. Mm -hmm. and avoid origin stories where they're not necessary which is exactly what the batman is doing right it's saying we're going to come in in year two yeah because you know the parent stuff you don't need that so yeah. let's give you a period of his life which is something you haven't seen before i think those as two very nice places to start would be mm -hmm. great if they go with a new sort of dc just me ladies and gentlemen so much going on in the superhero genre and in entertainment uh, as a whole. So many things to look forward to. Um, this announcement, along with so many other announcements, and we forgot to talk about this last time and we'll briefly talk about it here, is did you see the He-Man, Kevin? Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah. It's funny you say that. I was looking, I looked Ooh. at the image. <laughs> it's well because this is supposed to be a real update of the actual 80s yes cartoon which is yeah, yeah that, that hasn't aged well but like yeah. it uh <laughs> but it looked good it, looked it good. definitely looks good uh, yeah. uh i'm looking forward to seeing that man and then you also got a few weeks ago a month ago the announcement of uh the guy that did i forget his name he did uh king kong versus godzilla godzilla versus kong um, that he's going to be directing uh, his version of the Thundercats. Adam Wingard, yeah. Yes. And by the way, I do have a list of actors and actresses to take on those roles. I got I to gotta write it down and do a little, a, a small segment on that because I have the perfect cast. Um, but listen, there's just so many things, great things going on. Hopefully DC... Um, when these guys come in, DC could could restart again because I, I I think it just that deserves and needs one because some of the stuff that's that that's being done right now, for example, Black Adam, Aquaman, Wonder Woman, the next outings for these films, I think will be the the last um, films that'll be connected to a universe that no longer exists. Um, and I'm looking for a, a restart, man, of, of what you said, original stories that were classic. They're there for you. Tower of Babel, World's Finest, 
hyper clan. There's just a bunch of stories that you can do that you don't need to have somebody give me your interpretation. Go ahead, hear the keys to whatever and do with it what you with, what you will. No more, no more. Let's get back to basics, man. And 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 telling us great stories that are, have already been, you know, we can do the Hunger Games, we can do all these books, but we can't do these comic books, man. We got to do our own joint because we want to do it because we want to do it my way. No, man, you're not Usher. You can't do it your way. <laughs> so let's get back to what we what we know and, and, and just bring that to life. And I think we'll be all right. Uh, Brian, last words. Just that things are moving so much faster than I think we would have even anticipated. So, I mean, it, it just underscores that you need scale, you need size, you need, you know, diversification, you need all these things to be a player in the, in the modern age. And, you know, for our genre, like it's, it's going to be at the centerpiece of almost all of these different players in some form or fashion, but, you know, Keep your eyes peeled because I think there's going to be more of this stuff. This is, this is you know, inning oh, yeah. one or two. Like, there's going to be more of this stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And we're going to keep our eyes peeled and ears perked up to listen to what these uh, new things are going to be coming up. And we're going to bring it to you always on the Nerd Gem Report. Thank you for joining us. Hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Share with your friends. And we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gem Report. Bye.